My mind's about to pop But enough of that noise Time for the B-roll boys What's up guys? Welcome back to B-roll boys. My name is Justin. My name is Wes. And Harlan. And today we are doing Spy Kids 3D Game Over from 2003, directed by Robert Rodriguez. I'm gonna go on record and say I fucking love this movie. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know why you picked this movie. Like, this is easily the most enjoyable movie we've watched so far. Well, because why not kick the shit out of a dead horse since it's an easy topic, so... I just <laughs> love Robert so Rodriguez. Because there's so much tear apart, but this was an absolute blast. Yeah, this movie's fun as fuck, like... And that's the thing, is, yeah, I kind of feel bad shitting on it, because, like, this movie knows that it's dumb. But, it, you know, it's... And it, it is totally okay with that, you know? It definitely knows it's dumb, and it draws attention to that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, they call themselves but, out. It's a very self-aware, stupid movie. But this is the third in the Spy Kids franchise. And this is the only one that I believe I saw in theaters. And oh, I, I saw being three. hyped to see this in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking loved Spy Kids when I was little. So yeah, I saw all three of them. I think I only saw this one in theaters. I think. I don't know. I remember being hyped for this one because I knew it was about video games. I knew it was going to be in, like, wacky 3D. Whoa. So, and the entire movie is based around that. Like, I yeah. kind of wish we had the 3D glasses. Now, I will say, when I watched it in the theater, it hurt my eyes. <laughs> I'm oh, glad yeah, this movie is only, like, an hour 20 because <laughs> that is rough to have 3D glasses on for that long. And it was, like, the old shitty 3D glasses. Not, like, the new baller 3D that at least, like, looks pretty good. This was the red and blue glasses. Yeah. It was the worst yeah. thing ever. Yeah, this, uh, the 3D, like you said, in this movie is is absolutely a gimmick. Like, I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to think of a movie that, that uses 3D as a crutch as much as this one does. It is just constantly, like, no pun intended, it's shoving it in your face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was Spy Kids 3D. Oh shit! But, whoa, the entire movie is on a green screen set, though, for sure. I mean, I guess it kind of works because it's supposed to be a shitty video game, <laughs> and it definitely like, looks like an Oculus game. Yeah, well, I, guess, I, mean, I guess for the time, this movie looked realistic. <laughs> for a, I mean, yeah, for a game, this would have been like what in the beginning of the PS2 era, in the middle of PS2 era. Yeah, but Doom looked better than this. <laughs> like I, I remember the first time I played Toontown. <laughs> <laughs> the first level in this in this uh, in this game in the movie is totally Toontown. Well, there's a lot nice. of like moralizing and points thrown around to this uh, through this movie of like you shouldn't Very fall in subtle. love with e girls and. Everybody is your family, <laughs> and you should trust fucking nobody. <laughs> also, that, that's that's my favorite point. <laughs> yeah, your friends are gonna consistently double cross you until the end, or they don't, and then everybody comes together. It's great. <laughs> I mean, actually, it's very realistic. <laughs> so we start off, and the the main <laughs> character is the little the little boy from the first two. His name is Juni Cortez. And he seems to have quit their lovely spy organization that were set up in the first two movies, and now he's just, like, a, a detective, even though he's ten. <laughs> yeah, and he has, like, this super high-tech, like, Kids Next Door treehouse, and he's getting paid, like, four bucks a case. He like literally it's just, is getting paid, like, like four bucks a case. He meets fucking Selena Gomez at a water park. And they, like, share their intel. And then she hands him, like, four $1 bills. Like, a very noticeable, a wad of ones. <laughs> and he keeps I, them in, like, a glass piggy bank with wings. <laughs> and I just love how they're trying to make it as intense as possible, because it starts off like it's fucking paycheck, and Mel Gibson's narrating it. <laughs> I mean, I have to imagine that was intentional. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but, Absolutely. But Absolutely. I guess I had to, I have to preface everything in this movie out with that. I was like, yeah, it's stupid, but it's intentional. Yeah. So maybe this isn't the greatest uh, movie to talk about, but god damn, is it fun. It yeah, should not have a been. Blast. Like, I could, I could probably watch this movie like once a month. <laughs> it should did. not have been the best movie we've watched so far. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Like, but it is. Unironically, and... I'm not skipping to the head to the end by any means, but what would you give this out of ten? I'd give it like an eight. 
Uh, <laughs> get an actual yeah. eight. <laughs> you'd, you'd put it up there with like clerks and. Schindler's <laughs> List. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say like a solid eight. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I'll, I'll give. I guess just for pure entertainment value, I'll go like maybe a seven. But I think I want to stick around six territory. I mean, I, I think this movie's dumb enough that you can like. Because I'm sure a lot of people would say that this is the kind of movie you have to watch with friends. But I think this movie's dumb enough that you can watch it by yourself and still have a good time. You know. I, I did watch this when I was twelve. So. Which yeah, I it's mean, basically like, who, the same now. I mean, who's to say how sad it is if, if you're watching this movie by yourself? But, you know, it's neither here nor there. Hey, wait a minute. I own this on DVD, motherfucker. <laughs> you don't where's the, the 4K? 4K? Yeah, where's the 4K rip? <laughs> the 4K. Yeah, I need to get my 4K Blu-ray remaster of this. I it doesn't look book. shitty enough already. <laughs> I got the steelbook the with the glasses. Oh, hell like, yeah. Oh, but they also... So while Judy is uh, saving cats from trees and helping out Selena Gomez at this disgusting-looking Ackworth water park, <laughs> she, um, they establish that there's a virtual reality game made by Sylvester Stallone who's called the Toy Maker. <laughs> I don't know why he, he's called the Toy Maker. He yeah, he makes games. He's game maker. <laughs> he did he make a single Todd toy. Howard. <laughs> Unless, what if the toy maker was like his hacker name, like like in the nineties? It's, like, it's like it's like the the O in toy maker is a zero. <laughs> X capital X toy maker sixty nine four twenty X X. The E is also a three, definitely. <laughs> I mean, so they get to. Um, I mean, who cares? Essentially, he gets into the game because. <laughs> He's called by the President of the United States, who's George Clooney. And he's like, your sister's missing. And Clooney's like, oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, so he, he wants, wants like, go. he wants well, nothing to do with it until he's like, your sister's missing. And this movie's, like, trying to set up, like, you know, like, a, a reluctant hero who's out of the business, you know? Well, they, they, they say that, but then they make him go to the store and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a great part that I love where, like, he's in line, and the line is maybe five or six people, and he looks over, and there's this guy putting up, like, a window sticker for a charity, and he's like, there's more important things than games. And he steps away for two seconds, and then over the TV, here's Sly Stallone with a fake mustache say, oh, and the, winner, the winner of this game gets untold riches. How and did he that steps work? back in line. I have no clue. Wait. <laughs> Wait. That was the toy maker? <laughs> oh god this has levels Dude. yeah he had Whoa. his rambo headband on. oh shit it has holy levels. shit oh oh, oh. oh i didn't even mean to oh my god no but but the oh my god is in prison in, in cyberspace so how how is he on the news he's trapped in the matrix oh, how did he produce a game and get it into production <laughs> to go to stores like yeah. the most believable thing is that he's on the tv what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> I guess I took it to mean that an actual, like, news station, but that's a good point. Well, like, he's, uh, Judy tries to step back in line after he's like, oh, dude, money, fuck yeah. And this kid's like, yeah, get to the back of the line, you fucking loser. And then there's, like, 30 people. <laughs> yeah, they almost lynched him in the street before he got in the back of the line. Oh, yeah, and then doesn't he, like, don't, doesn't he trip? And he, like, smashes his piggy bank and loses everything. <laughs> yeah, he loses yep. all $17 he collected over the last fiscal yeah, year. It cinematically <laughs> blows away in a sudden gust. <laughs> Damn, it's like a metaphor for something. Maybe it was an off-screen Pidgeotto? Huh? That's another, that's another video game. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Oh, yeah, we do have tenuous video game references thrown into Throughout this. the entire thing. They oh, make yeah, a this movie... Sorry, they, do, they definitely do make a reference to Halo at one point. I was like, that's a rated M game. But okay. Oh, yeah, he shouldn't have been it's played. It's a light M. I will give it. It's not like close to what normal rated well, M games are. But even still, when it's you... a little bit rough for a 10-year-old. <laughs> that's true. Especially when you consider that Halo came out like three years before it. <laughs> or two to three years. So he yeah. would have been even younger. But I mean, I, mean, I played I... Duke Nukem 3D when I was like six. So I can't really say much. Now, my parents had a, a hard clamp on what I could play. And... Halo, when I was, what would I have been, like, eight when Halo 1 came out? No chance would I have been able to play that. So I, I think something I said uh, early on in the movie was, well, like, you know, like we all said that we uh, we saw this movie in the theater uh, with our parents, and uh, 
man. I mean, like, we were kids when we saw this, you know, so we were just like, yeah, hey, whatever, sure. You know, like, we weren't really, like, judging it in any way, you know? We were just there to have a good time. And I would love to know, like, what either of my parents would have to say about this movie, you know? Uh, I wouldn't put them through that now, <laughs> you know? I, I, I don't want to do that to them. But there's I a would. part of me that wants to, like that wishes we had them as guests for this episode, you know? And we can just ask them what they think of this movie, because I would love to know. Man, we should have saved this for Thanksgiving. <laughs> just have all of our families special. on. The B-roll moms. <laughs> moms of B-roll. <laughs> the mothers of culture. <laughs> uh, I don't know what mine even would have fucking said because I was too busy like running around the theater after the movie pretending I was the guy <laughs> <laughs> to even to even give a shit what they said that's what you did right after we finished watching this <laughs> yeah, it's true I had to take a break you're like I'm the guy I had to circle around my apartment for a few minutes <laughs> oh you're killing me man it's like Naruto running around and be like I'm the guy I'm the guy I'm the guy I'm Elijah Wood and th- and then I would just stand ominously in a hallway. <laughs> I'm the guy. <laughs> okay, so basically we get into this game. He, the idea is to you're supposed to shut down the game, and you have to save your sister who's imprisoned somehow, whatever. And he gets thrown into this atrocious-looking world. <laughs> like TV movie Disney Channel level of it's, graphical it's, fidelity it's Toontown. Here. It is Toontown. <laughs> it's literally Toontown. And basically he's thrown in these like frogs on pogo sticks. Yeah, it's the Mega Legums. To- po- <laughs> well, actually, pogo I'm sorry. Toads. Can I point something else out before we move on to the pogo toads? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Wes. Go on. <laughs> you, you're allowed so- to proceed. <laughs> So he gets he gets booted into the game and he like lands face first on the ground and he like knocks on it and he's like computer generated <laughs> and I'm like, and like along with a few other things that he says later in the movie I'm like has he has he never played a video game before like he he's seemed, too like, busy surprised. being a sleuth <laughs> <laughs> he was too busy making bank <laughs> making them fat dollar ones he like he. he he doesn't understand, like, that shit is computer-generated in a video game. I'm like, what did you think it was gonna be? Well, he like, absorbs when explain, nothing. When they explain lives to him, they're like, you have ten life points. He's like, what happens when I hit zero? I'm like, what the fuck do you think, idiot? Have you never yeah, played he a video said, game? He, he says shit like that a lot. And, and yeah, I, I guess he never has. I don't know why he'd be so excited for, for Game well, Over to come out then. I mean, this is 2003. They... It's not like video games had just come out. Yeah. They needed a character... To like, in case the someone in the audience was stupid, never played a video game before, but they didn't need to make it the main character. <laughs> it, it could have been like anybody else. <laughs> yeah, and then we get to. I know in the theatrical version with the actual 3D, there are like little indicators of like, put your glasses on, put your glasses on, because you're supposed to take them on and off throughout the movie. I'm yeah. guessing it's so they're not hurting kids' eyes the entire time, which makes sense but it still is fairly tacky. So, when you say the theatrical cut, are you implying that there's, like, a director's cut of <laughs> Spy Kids 3? Because I, I, I thought you were about to, like, point out the differences or something. No. <laughs> so like, um, actually, in the theatrical cut. Look, I'm a nerd for this movie. I'm not that much of a nerd for this movie. <laughs> if you there are be. any alternate cuts of this, I'm not aware of them. I just know there's, like, the 2D version and the 3D version where, like, they've got I'll the prompts on screen and all that. But, yeah, we start, we have these shenanigans with the Pogo Toads. And this movie just wants to, like, throw the shit in your face as often as possible. And I'm not talking about, like, a handful of times. I mean, like, four or five times a scene. Yeah, There's a million shots of, like, stuff stretching into the camera. And you're supposed to be like, whoa! Whoa! 3D had been around for a while, but... Okay. Well, I guess I mean I guess the kids that this was aimed at might not have seen a 3D movie before, so especially the first two wasn't in 3D, so they're just trying to go super hammy with it. I think I had seen 3D stuff before. This might have been the first 3D movie, but I'm pretty sure I'd been to what was it Universal that had that Terminator 2 thing that was 3D? Oh hell yeah! 
Yeah, that ride fucked. Anyway, so <laughs> they uh, so the the kids come in, and we get the, the introduction to all these the coolest characters ever, <laughs> unless we forget. Um, and then like the isn't the first kid he runs into like the super strong one that's even shorter and wimpier than yeah, Junie Arnold. is. Yeah, he's like four he's, foot flat. His name is Arnold, and he already has like paid DLC goggles on <laughs> that, no, <laughs> that nobody else has, and everyone just thinks he's so cool. No, the other guy that the the guy that's supposed to be cool because there's the strong kid, the nerdy, brainy kid, and the cool kid. And the cool one's name is Rez. Yeah, and and Junie says hi, Rez. <laughs> uh, even though it's not, we're all like, ah. <laughs> and then the, the nerdy kid's name is Francis, but no one gives a fucking shit about him. He's got like three lines. That's <laughs> true. Uh, he comes in, and he, well, he's like, he must have just ramboed out one of those toads, right? Because yeah. when he comes in on screen, he's like riding one of their vehicles, so you know some shit went down. <laughs> Carjacked. <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh Junie grabs a hold of him and then he launches him into like a Looney Tunes hole in the ground <laughs> and I <don't... laughs> but yeah then they take him to see Rez and they're like this is the coolest guy ever and then they just keep introducing every newer character as the coolest guy ever and he just looks like a member of NSYNC because there's so much hair gel in this movie every single almost every single one of these kids has like spiked gelled hair this movie <laughs> is moist <laughs> This movie is very movie. fucking 90s, considering it was, like, 2003 when it came out. It's slightly greasy, and it smells like axe. <laughs> but, but, like, I at this point, there's really no reason for them to be hostile. It's like everyone immediately hates each other, but then the strong kid, the nerd, and the cool kid are, like, just friends instantly, but they just want to fuck with Junie for some reason. Yeah, yeah. how long have they been playing the game? Like, there's, If they're true I, I could... beta testers... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they should embrace the community. They're brothers in arms. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he's like, "Listen, I gotta get a shortcut to level two. And then they uh, like, "There you go, hit that target over there." And then he just launches to the fucking moon. <laughs> As you do. As you do. And then he's uh, told that he could bring in a family member, like who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> and he oh, chooses yeah. his grandpa in a wheelchair for like. I think his reasoning was like, oh, because he doesn't have uh, functionality in his legs, that means that his arms and his brain and his heart are that much stronger. I'm like, that's not what that means at all. He's still like 90. You, you could just say that he's smart. Yeah, that would be enough. Yeah, like, well, was... and even then, like, yeah, he, he brought him in not knowing that he would immediately after that get the mega legs power up that would allow him <laughs> to walk and make him like 10 feet tall. So, like, yeah, I get. was he planning on hauling around uh, his grandpa on a wheelchair the whole time? I well, mean... And then the toy maker, he put that power up there specifically for him, but he put a lot of faith in knowing that they would recruit Junie to save his sister, and then the one person he could pick would be his grandfather. Because why would he pick him? Yeah, his parents are the best his parents are the best spies ever <laughs> and yeah there's fucking machete and then there's even <laughs> there's even cheech and you you pick your crippled grandfather like i guess the toy maker he just he can also decide fate <laughs> or he knows what's gonna happen he really is the ultimate hacker <laughs> <laughs> he hacked into the real world <laughs> I think this might be the most ADHD eh, ADHD movie of all time because we are flipping through locales like every 30 to 40 seconds. No, we go dude, from it's, that it's... like Crash Bandicoot world to the moon and then we go to this uh, like boxing rink. Or yeah, like the, and there's, there's the, only... The Rebel Rockets uh, <laughs> arena of misfortune. Yeah, that's on the moon. <laughs> And there's only, quote-unquote, five levels. What differentiates a fucking level? And this is basically yeah, like an, this is basically like an MMO. Like, they're not leveling up. They talk about, like, physical levels. But where does it end? Where does it begin? Well, because they get well, a I, map. I think, well, I think the, the, it ended, you know, when, when he bounced up to the moon. That was the loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he was on level two, where the, the other fuckers go? How do they get to the moon? Like, his level two was later. They didn't go to the moon. He, he met them at, at level three. So, the moon was just, like, a secret stage? I guess. <laughs> I thought the 
I thought the race was level two. So the moon just has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, it was like a I'm, side I'm area. Sure. I'm pretty sure the moon was level because two. Because it's like, well, this is an yeah. open world game, but and you can have multiple paths because they have a map, and they use the map to be like, okay, this is the most like economic path, but then you don't have like numerical levels. You just have zones. But even on the map, it says like level one, level two, level They should have just called them zones. I guess they I'm, figured calling them I'm, levels, people would understand that better, but... I'm no. starting to think they didn't think this through. Well, okay, oh, also, you know what? I'm going to piggyback off that thought, Harlan, because that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the moon, so that means the side stage of the moon that no one else goes sets up the plot point of the Deceiver as a side zone? Because that's where um, the goth chick yeah. comes in? Yeah, good point, good point. Could've Whatever totally her name is, the goth that he simps over immediately comes in <laughs> <laughs> yeah like we get this the like mech boxing rink thing where oh they wait get in their like zoid suits and fight and he looks at this girl <laughs> and he's like oh fuck yeah all right before that though after he lands on the moon that's when they call him to bring his grandfather in his yeah. grandfather comes in and is like why'd you pick me? I've been hunting him for 30 years. And it's like, well, wouldn't you be happy about that? But he literally gets his mega leg power up that just pops up in front of him and runs after butterflies on the moon. And Junie's like, what the fuck, Grandpa? And he's just like, I'll catch up. like, I'll catch up. I'll catch up with you later. Like, how? Yeah. yeah. And then he well, goes and... Uh, <laughs> they've established already that, that uh, Junie has telepathy in the game. I don't know how he knew that. But oh, he just yeah. like he, he gets in the game and the first thing he does is he tries to like reach his sister with his mind. And That's like, the who, only who, thing who he knows that, how to like, do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then they reach that um moon thunderdome like right after that. <laughs> and uh I guess what's an NPC cuz I don't know why just a random kid would be like referee. playing as an yeah, a referee. And <laughs> you think they pull like him up. This kid minimum wage to like be a random <laughs> like nobody in this arena. <laughs> And these are like the worst designed mechs ever because he gets on the giant mech suit without a head and he's, you're literally just standing on the platform. You're not buckled in there's to no protection. anything. If you walk on the platform and there's no like treadmill or anything, the robot walks around. So I guess it gets your movements, but I would have fallen off that thing and fucking died in the first <laughs> two seconds. I'm assuming that it... I'm, let's let's assume that the the pads that they control them from, like on the on the head of the robot, uh, just have like you know their own gravitational thing, I guess. But yeah, like even like if you like punched the pad, you know, so to speak, like right in the face of the robot, the 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 pilot would just fly off and and die. But that doesn't happen because the chick punches him in the face. And he's just kind of yeah. like, oh, that's mildly inconvenient, even though I was just hit with, like, three Jeeps. <laughs> you know, so so on that point, like, when he, when he first gets to the moon, he loses, like, three lives or so, I think. And then he has to be explained, you know, the concept of uh, losing lives and shit. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and, like, that's all it took. And then, uh, like, he gets his ass kicked. Like, there's a montage of, of uh, the, the girl, the goth chick that he's simping over, like, flipping him over and, like, kicking his ass for, like, five minutes. She and suplexes he doesn't, him. It do he doesn't lose any lives. She's, like, destroying him. I think he loses <laughs> and, one. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, wait, no. He, um, he costs her fucking five lives, though. Like, when they're fighting, her like, he gets, like, one hit in, and then she loses, like, two lives. No, he doesn't, he doesn't even hit her, like... He, he like, spins around her to get her yeah. to look around too fast and get dizzy, and I guess the robot unwinds, and it starts spinning like a top, and then he comes over, pokes her, she falls over, and she loses, like, five lives. Yeah, like, what Which, the fuck I that? don't know what determines, like, the HP of these things. Like, <laughs> I don't know, There's man, no bar. Okay. If, if anyone gets fucking that. farted on, they lose a life. <laughs> so I guess that's why they start off with nine. It's but yeah, he just gets the idea to Sonic run around the ring, and for some reason <laughs> she's like trying to follow him with the robot eyes, I guess, and it just goes around so much that it just falls over, and then she almost lies, like, or it dies, and he's like, oh, you're about to lose all your lives and get trapped here forever, but that's cool. <laughs> but like, she could, if, 
Look, if I was in a mech arena with somebody fighting hand to hand in these like matrix fights, and someone started running around the edge of the stadium, I'd be like, "Yeah, good one." You just close hanger them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Why would you bother trying to look at them? Like, oh, he's too fast. <laughs> so after this, we uh, he gets sprung somewhere else, and oh, we're also introduced to Sylvester Stallone's like alter egos. He's got like a General Patton. A scientist and a hippie that are all supposed to be like different versions of himself yeah and it's never not hilarious those are the best scenes in the movie it's just sylvester stallone talking to himself like four versions of himself and it's the greatest thing ever You're like, you are talking to yourself i am you i wish i could <laughs> i wish i could this program movie has some great fucking lines like that he was oh, having we'll a blast that. in this. Oh, totally. I mean, everyone was, but... Like, then we get to, uh... Junie meets back up with those, uh... Kids. And he just steps in front of the sign of the game. It's supposed to be, like, the poster of the game, but it's in the game. And he happens to <laughs> line up... Well, not perfectly, but he kind of roughly lines up with the outline of the main Avatar character. And they're like, you're the guy. Yeah, you're the they're, box guy. They're yeah, like, he has the, the cover art. He has the cover art armor set, so he must literally be God. <laughs> <laughs> you're the protagonist. You have plot protection. Yeah, the rest of us get these airsoft suits, but he's got like this <laughs> little dinky plastic Iron Man suit. Well, he got to keep that for... Uh, for winning at, at the Rebel Rockets arena of misfortune. Yeah. So, I mean, if he hadn't gone there, they never would have thought he was the guy. So that's, I guess it was destiny. That's true. That is but, true. Fate. Um, and I don't know, like, how long are these other kids have supposed to have been in the game? Because also at that point, they start talking about, like, all the shit that he needs to do. It's like, oh, you gotta do this and this, and you have to do this. Like, they've beaten yeah, they the game before. Everything. It's like, what the fuck have they done? Like, they were farming the toads on level one half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, and on that note, too, like, they're constantly flip-flopping. Like, they're, like, you know, they're, like, giving him so much shit when they first meet him in, in the first level in, in Toontown or whatever. <laughs> and then when they, when they uh, you know, think he's the guy, they're like, whoa, you're the guy. We have to follow you. And then they're like, wait, but you can't be the guy. And then they challenge him to a race to prove he's the guy. And, you know, I'm jumping ahead here a little bit. We'll go back. But he wins the race, and they're like, you're the guy, but fuck you anyway. And they're like, but if still, you try like, anything, you motherfucker, we're going to shame Yeah, you. like, they still refuse to trust him. And I'm like, he just passed your test. Like, yeah, he, he has given you no reason not to trust him. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, every two minutes, they turn coat real quick. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, These kids fuck this dude, minds. or he's the coolest dude ever, without but any yeah, other going, plot going points with... in between it. <laughs> well, but they tell him, like, well here's what we're gonna do we're gonna like mega race and if you win that you're the fucking guy yeah and there can be no doubt <laughs> rodriguez is basically just like okay you guys saw episode one right well we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take the pod race and make it mario kart <laughs> and, and that's what this like five minute sequence is but it's it's wonderful the entire time it's so ridiculous like every single one of these carts has just like absurdly huge wheels and these like single use buttons there's one like the goth girl comes back what's her name Demetra and rightfully pissed which is a real name yeah. and yeah she's pissed and she does like the th uh, slitting her throat thing to Junie and he's like oh fuck well it, no one knows you don't, you don't know that's right? her though because she has her, a mask though, on and yeah. they're like I don't know who that is. She's wearing the exact same armor and color of that other chick, but I just of don't know. Of the character Speaking we of, saw, like, literally five minutes ago. Speaking of her name, Demetra, I'm surprised they didn't give her a name that, like, is, like, a play on words for, like, something computer-related. What if it is? <laughs> what, if, what if it's just too smart for you? Oh, shit. Yeah, what if Demetra is, like, code for something? That's the hot <laughs> coffee mod in Santa I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put that in my command line and see what happens. Yeah, just just type that in there and hit enter and we'll... <laughs> Let God take care of the rest. World peace Echo achieved. Demetra. <laughs> but, so yeah, they do this race. And, yeah, the Mario Kart hijinks are off the fucking chain. And I guess there's multiple times where these different kids are flying off the stage, right? 
like yeah. the the cool in sync guy at one point he does just <laughs> yeet right off the stage and he loses like three lives in midair they're pretty generous with the damage here this is like dark souls logic but he, he's back he's later back like does he get just like dragged back up on the stage or is he i don't know maybe it's a clone of him <laughs> whoa <laughs> I don't like, think well, this movie's deep enough for replicants, Justin. <laughs> I think the first time that, that uh, Junie died, he went into, like, purgatory, where an NPC explained uh, death to him in a video game. So, yeah, I, guess, still I, guess it's, I guess it's just, I guess you just immediately respawn if you've done it before. <laughs> also, Junie's the dumbest motherfucker ever, because Rez <laughs> yeah. drives up next to him. He's like, hey press that red button and he's like but it says don't press the button and then he, <laughs> he says no no press it it's a turbo boost but it doesn't say press the button <laughs> then guess what <laughs> he presses the button it. and just yeets himself yeah. off the stage <laughs> you know, he presses it and his car like just literally like starts flipping and like falling apart and I'm like why was that button there <laughs> yeah. why well, would you said, ever don't want press an eject it. button on that they're not well, wearing, like, seatbelts. You could just get up and leave. Well, he would have been fine if he didn't press it, Justin. God, use your noggin. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, at least this is, like, visually interesting. It's visually fun. Oh, yeah, it looks great. I have to say, the music is banging in this is it? movie. Yeah. Is which, it? which I didn't even realize, yeah. and Robert Rodriguez apparently did it himself. He, which he, makes he it that is, much better. He did. He directed... He wrote the script. He had the score. He yeah. edited it. He's basically perfect. I, I agree. He uh, he made uh, Planet Terror, sir. <laughs> I was saying so, earlier, like with with how many things he's credited for in this movie, I'm surprised he didn't have like you know an acting role in it. <laughs> this is like the equivalent of him taking like toy soldiers and banging them together. <laughs> I mean, basically. <laughs> I mean, all of his movies are stupid shit, but I mean, they're all great. <laughs> well, but I mean, uh, again, Junie wins, and then they turn code again. They're like, yeah, you're the guy. But we don't and, trust you. Yeah, I like how he, he also just kind of lucks into everything he does, like he's Vash and Trigun. It's like he just causes all this destruction in his wake, but they just think he's amazing, but he really just sucks. Yeah, he's really, like, tripping over his own two feet through the whole movie. And they're all just like, yeah, that's fucking right. <laughs> Hell yeah, guy. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and from that point guy. on, all yeah, they just call him the guy. Like, I think he introduces himself, and they all just, like, once they think he's the guy, they just call him guy from yeah, there's on. there's a couple times where they call him Junie, but, a lot, like, 70% of the time they're like, hey, guy. <laughs> that's a weird no, thing. Come on, you can do it. You're the guy. Hey, what's up, guy? <laughs> just, the, just the rest of it oh, and so after this they get into this like weird matrix looking area where, where they're like, like in the a, sky yeah they're just on these floating platforms it, it, it's supposed to be a video game okay and they attract because Demetra has a map they're like oh the programmers are here <laughs> Who are these fucking losers in trench coats and, like, do-rags? <laughs> yeah, the fucking moderators show up. Oh, yeah, and, <laughs> and the like... subtitles, the subtitles were revealed to us that it's programmers with a Z. Yeah, we, we only found out about that juicy lore via subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> and their names are E-Dog and Logos. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised they even named them. They're in the movie for like three minutes. Actually, yeah, that I mean that just shows how good this movie is and how well thought out it is. Well, and they they come up and try to like intimidate these kids. They're like, "We're gonna bounce you back to level one, motherfucker." Junie's like, "Cramps." <laughs> well, at least they were willing to do that instead of a vac. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention he's met back up with his grandpa at this point. He just like showed up in the middle of the race. Yeah, grandpa dips in and out of this movie a lot. Yeah, and you have no idea really where they're... Weird. It's like he's played the game more than anyone else somehow. <laughs> he knows yeah. exactly where to go. He knows exactly what to do. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of is like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm going to be this like omniscient well, figure, but I'll dip in and out as you need me. His yeah, only I don't, don't want to give you that, all the answers. His only excuse for that is like, oh yeah, uh, me and the toy maker tussled 30 years ago. I know exactly what his, how his mind works. <laughs> So he's able to just traverse his game, I guess. 
It's like, no, he. I know what you wanted to do, Grandpa. You wanted to perfect your 40-yard dash. <laughs> <laughs> but, What's, uh... yeah, so basically they somehow have the ability to, like, reveal who these programmers are, and they just end up being, like, IT nerds. <laughs> like, guys yeah. in office clothing. <laughs> they look like me and Harlan. <laughs> <laughs> They're like at work. Dude, my pocket protector. <laughs> One of them does have a pocket protector, and they look at these guys and like computer nerds. <laughs> and then they're like, "Yeah, we've been had." <laughs> and they run away. And yeah, they're, they're supposed to be like the mods and the, the the programmers. Like they can like hack into the game and do shit to you. But like Grandpa just like kicks their ass, and I'm like, "Fucking how?" Like he doesn't he do anything. Like, he just blitzes them up. Yeah, he like barely physically a- assaults them and they're just like mm, yeah, oh no <laughs> and i guess this game was a three man team the toy maker and those two admins <laughs> yeah this is this is a by a small indie team please support do not pirate <laughs> <laughs> what is what does the game have a name yeah it's game over it's just game over okay yeah uh, uh. didn't you fucking pay attention god i, I just didn't I, catch that either i just thought you know it would have been more original than that, considering how well thought out everything else is. Yeah, that name is pretty lame, not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh, I'm I get it, you because you're supposed art. to lose. Oh. oh. Now you're Prepare, getting it. It's game over, prepare to die edition. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> after those that sick run in with the admins, they come across one, probably one of the funnier moments, the free health. And the Junie just fucking simps out hard. Yeah, like more than I've ever seen anyone simp. <laughs> That's ever. the equivalent of giving $150 in someone's Twitch chat. He has yeah. like a life left. And he's like, oh, Demetra, do you want a life? <laughs> yeah, even though he is like here on a mission, not only to save his sister, but to save the world. But now that girl's the toy maker. <laughs> Yeah, like he has only like, I think like two lives left at this point. Or half a life or something, which is weird. Like, he, there are half lives in this for some reason. Oh, no, wait, that's later. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we're skipping spoiler. ahead in the juicy lore here. He has only a few lives left, and she has, like, I, th- I think the same amount, but whatever. Yeah. And yeah, he, he's even though he's on, a, like, a mission to save the world and his family, he's like, nah, you have it. I want well, some It's because he's a good guy. He's a good, chivalrous guy. Yeah, man. How come? How come he doesn't get the girl, then? Well, we'll, we'll uh, get to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. But, like, right after that whole simp fest, his grandfather's just, like, face palming in the corner. <laughs> he, he, go, he goes up to him, he's like, it gives him the best future RuneScape player advice ever. He's like, don't fall in love with the game, Junie. <laughs> he's that like, girl's a 40 year old man. She just wants your, <laughs> she just wants your gold, Junie. <laughs> Don't add that girl on Skype, Judy. <laughs> and it's like, man, these were words to live by when I was 13. Right? But, like, then they get to this, uh, this like, Cloud City-looking area, and we get Sylvester Stallone voiceover of, like, choose your best player, and everyone's like, the guy, hell yeah! And then choose your strongest player, and they go to, like, the little kid, and they're like, what's his name? Arnold. Arnold. And they're like, yeah, that's the strongest kid. And now that's they've like, got to fight to the death. Wait, I'm sorry. You What's you that? skipped over something extremely important. Yeah, you and skipped I'm over the Arnold there. reveal. Oh, I yeah. forgot there's Arnold yeah. character development. Yeah. Right, right okay, before take, they got to fight take to it away, the death. Take it away, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, they like... <laughs> He basically reveals that his family's in poverty, and he's here for the treasure and riches behind level five. No, it's like, he wait, says I thought you he, were a beta tester. He says he's on a beta or game beta visa. What does that and, mean? And I don't know. I don't and that I guess for beating the game, he's gonna get money, so his family isn't poor anymore. And Junie goes, "I don't want to fight Arnold," and he's like, "I don't want to fucking shit stomp Junie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to absolutely destroy him." <laughs> I don't want a 360 no scope him. <laughs> and they have like a bow staff battle, but again, just like the rest of the movie, this out op- this fight operates on like Calvin Ball rules. So these staffs can do fucking anything. They can yeah. break the platforms, they can spurt out like this freezing ink that does yeah. nothing and And like Juni just knows that it does that. Like he just like starts, you know, like trying to paint like a wall that will freeze. 
and nobody explains it to him. So I'm like, how did, like he yeah. just had to have everything explained to him in this game. How did he know it would do that? Exactly. Like, he smacked it on the ground in perfect sequence, and then it like opened up, and then he just started like painting around like it was fucking Splatoon. <laughs> <laughs> this movie predicted Splatoon. <laughs> I mean, basically, like a decade too early. Similar art style. But oh, he gets a. Uh, he gets, he gets tagged, tagged for, uh, like Street Fighter style by Demetra, and she's like, "You've got to, you've got to save your sister, Junie." Oh, and he's got point five lives left at this point because Arnold. Kicks yeah, his Arnold. Ass. Arnold yeah, beats fucking... the living fuck out of him, and <laughs> yeah. Arnold doesn't take a single hit. Right? <laughs> he's he's got champ. no remorse. He's one of those kids that like used to burn ant piles and shit. <laughs> like, remember when like Luke Skywalker was just hammering down on Darth Vader? It was basically that. Yeah. <laughs> just smacking him <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> and yeah, so it's oh sorry, yeah. I just want to point out how weird it is that yeah, he like the lives have been like whole digits this whole time. But when he gets down to one life and then he gets another hit, he goes down to 0. 0.5. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like what? Sure. It's I guess it was like a micro hit, wounds. even though it was a hit that knocked him like twenty feet away. That was yeah. the that was the hardest hit he took. Yeah. Like he barely got touched, and it took off like two lives at some point. It's so inconsistent, like what takes a life and how many lives they take. It's all over the place. <laughs> That's what I want from this movie: is consistency. Yeah, it could and have once, been perfect. Once Demetra tags in, she's like, "You gotta save your sister." And he's like, "But I just..." Well, I just pissed away that health pack, I guess. Not yeah, ten minutes like, ago that I give it to you, and you're at like full life, but she gets one hitted by Arnold. Yeah, and, and that's yeah, that's the other thing is like even even though she has full lives, and I don't know, I don't know how many Arnold has, but I, I don't think he's at full lives either. Like she has the advantage. Just like half. Yeah, she has like a stock advantage, you know, just mm -hmm. from that. You know, she has more <laughs> lives, so it's like she could at least try to put up the fight and just you know like kill him before she before he can. Uh, take all of her lives, but she doesn't even try. And, like, she's been portrayed as, like, you know, a hardcore, you know, badass girl throughout this movie, but, like, yeah. she just gets her ass kicked in, like, three seconds and loses all ten of her lives. Yeah, she should have nine-stalked him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she goes I mean, from she... suplexing Judy to, like, waving this thing around <laughs> like yeah, a she broom. Doesn't, like, she, yeah, she gets her ass kicked in, like, a second, and it's... it's weird. <laughs> Oh, and the line that I love at the end of this is when they're walking away. That's when Grandpa drops the line of, like, don't fall in love with a game, Junie. And then Arnold comes up. He's like, I'm sorry, Junie. My family. <laughs> he's doing this for his family, for his poverty-stricken family. <laughs> I'm so glad this movie told us what his motivations were literally right before that happened. They yeah, spent his like, last 60 bucks. <laughs> they're like, oh my god, we realized that we don't have any reason for this kid to be sympathetic at all. We need to invent something. Instant poverty. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he. anyone needs a reason to be just playing a video game? Because he's like, why are you here? It's like, because like, I'm, I'm playing a... F I'm beta testing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because uh, video games are fun. Get out of here, simp. <laughs> because there's a money prize. Like, yeah, it's not reason enough. There's a monetary incentive. Like everyone else is gonna be in here, because yeah. e the idea is that the toy maker is going to get every single kid in the world. Okay, and get basically <laughs> brainwash them to where they they won't be able to look away from the TV. And then you control the youth, you control the future of the world. Oh, do you get it? Because children are our future? Yeah, and because children are obsessed with video games, even though those same kids grew up to be us and we still play video games. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, that means it worked. Yeah. I'm, push I'm pushing 50 and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> we put Wes in a retirement home today. <laughs> I just bought Stardew Valley, it's delightful. We put him in a retirement home where he just watches Spy Kids 3 on a loop. <laughs> he's got three monitors. He plays Stardew Valley, Spy Kids, and he's got the like Rambo movies on loop. And like, the third one. I'm just rocking back and forth saying Game Over over and over again. <laughs> uh, no, you, you would be singing the Game Over song from the credits of this movie. Oh, yes. Game Over! <laughs> Game Over! Okay, so what happens next? Oh, the um, sickest, illest shit ever. <laughs> you mean... <laughs> I don't even remember. Well, they, they find they find his sister. They find Carmen, oh, and yeah. he tries to do his telepathy thing again, 
And she's like, what? I'm right fucking here. Fucking noob. <laughs> and she's what? got this, like, giant claw for no reason. Yeah, it's like a... It's like a she's... It's almost like an actual, like, claw machine claw, mm-hmm. you know? With, like, how, like, delicate the fingers look. Yeah, it looks but, like yeah, it's like this. Yeah, it's like this big gauntlet, except for the fingers that look like you could break them. She's like Bionic Commando if the <laughs> if it was modeled after a death claw arm. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool, <laughs> in like the dumbest way ever. But uh, that's when they they look around and there's like nothing but lava, and then one's like, "Well, I guess we gotta surf it." Oh, because they well, get the, forced in because they first try to walk away. Yeah. And the toy maker summons the the Tinker Toys. Oh yeah, it's in the Tinker Toys. Which, once again, is this common knowledge what these things are? They just look like little like tin can robots. Well, yeah. what yeah. if they have a HUD in first person that we can't see? Like they can see their <laughs> names, their health. Or they like that's what I like tutorial, to Tutorial, I guess. That's true. Well, Junie's playing the tutorial the whole fucking game. <laughs> Yeah, Junie's getting carried it through here. <laughs> Basically. He's like the worst teammate in that party. <laughs> so yeah, I guess they have no other choice but to run away with these hundreds of fucking uh, Tinker Toys running after them. So what does Grandpa do? <laughs> he busts open a rock, creates a surfboard, just fucking yeets himself off a cliff, <laughs> and just lands straight in the lava. Well, the other just kids just jump, it. and I guess they somehow materialize these surfboards along the way. Well, they they don't they grab all the rocks. They, they break, yeah, they break the rocks into like perfect surfboard shapes. But they like all break it in the exact same way. Well, it's a video game, dude. Oh, yeah. Obviously, it, it's a it's a set piece. It's like a Shadow the Hedgehog <laughs> set piece. <laughs> and yeah, they uh they come in contact with this lava monster, which I think looks kind of cool. <laughs> Is the ball really? I thought it looked all right. Like it's, it looks like a lava monster. If you're supposed to have like generic game enemy, like if this is a boss, it looks like one. It looks like a Metroid Prime thing. All right, Harlan. Whether or not you think it looks stupid, it's still the coolest looking thing in the entire movie. Aside from Elijah Wood, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't well. think it looks stupid. I just think it. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it looks like a generic lava monster, which is fine. I mean, that's all. That's all it's supposed to be. So, <laughs> like everything and else, by in definition, this game they're is generic. Like right out of Looney Tunes, like everything's just kind of weird and unsettling. And then this one thing is like, oh, it's like a cool monster. It's like a, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and then maybe they, your standards are just really low. Yeah, they. <laughs> well, they all get a uh, thrust into I mean, the it, lava, and they realize it's just like water. I also well, love that. Obviously, these none of these people are underwater because they're just sitting there with like their cheeks big holding their breath like i'm sorry can we can we put a pin in this yeah so the reason they fall into the lava and the reason the lava monster shows up in the first place is because outside of the game the the oss the organ the organization that that juni works for um they're they're like i, I forget why but like juni's not doing what they want him to do so they're like yeah, they don't want him to, to reach the other side of the lava river, I guess. And so they're like, we need to drown them. And so he, like, presses <laughs> this button on this, like, weird-ass keyboard that's just made of, like, orange triangles. Like, it's literally just, like, a circle covered in orange triangles. And he just presses the, the biggest triangle button in the center. And it summons the lava monster, I guess. And I'm like, okay, why can they do that? Like, they're not yeah. the programmers? Yeah, no, they're, like, in spectator mode at home base. Yeah, and like, liter- literally Mike Judge is like, we must drown them. <laughs> and he's in the movie for some fucking reason. Is it even drowning if you, like, fall in lava that will, you know, is supposed to burn you? But, uh, like, they, they have, have like, a... these kids alive doesn't sound good for a PG movie. It's because they have yeah. the smallest lore drop of all time, and they're like, oh, Grandpa's trying to release the toy maker, and they don't want him to do that, so now they're trying to be like, okay, mission over. And yeah, that's like that's like the whole thing that they're like. That's the other thing they're trying to prevent is is, uh, Grandpa wants revenge on the toy maker for putting him in a wheelchair, which is never explained how he did that. But oh, and speaking of which, <laughs> I forgot to mention like way early on in the movie, uh, when when they're explaining you know the deal with the toy maker to Junie and like what his goal is when he gets in the game, they're like, wait, so so why did you? They say that the toy maker is imprisoned in cyberspace whatever that means 
Right. Um, <laughs> and Ginny asks, uh, "Well, what did? What, why did you imprison him in cyberspace?" And Mike Judge says, "Who knows? It was years ago." <laughs> <laughs> like, like Robbie Rodriguez was writing this, and he was like, "Oh, what did he do?" Eh. I don't, <laughs> that, I don't fucking know. Or they just like yeah. didn't want to yeah. reveal it too early. Yeah, I guess. like almost like they set it up to be revealed later, and then they just forgot. They <laughs> just should not even have had that scene at all. They should have just threw him in there, I guess. But I mean, it was funny. Oh, that's great. But yeah, they... sorry to ju- sorry to jump all the way back. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. The uh... <laughs> so they can swim through the lava. They're like the lava. It's cold. It looks like a vat of piss at this point. It's just like <laughs> yellow and bubbly. And they get the uh, they get to the door of level five, and the nerdy kid is like, "I've been rereading my tech manual, and it speaks of a deceiver within the game. I think that Junie's a deceiver." Because this is like the fourth time now that they've changed their minds on what this kid's supposed to be. And that was yeah. back when games still came with manuals. Yeah, <laughs> man, I miss game manuals. I love those. So cool. Like, I like that giant novel that came with Halo 1. I was all about it. Yeah, you would never know about the Halo Deceiver if you didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so, they're, um, he tries to say, like, I- I'm the guy! I'm the guy! And they're like, we know that you're not the guy. And who is it but Elijah Wood that you just hear off screen? <laughs> he's not the guy. And he's got this perfect, like, silver chrome suit. And he's like, I yeah. am. I'm the fucking yeah. guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's wearing, like, the exact same power suit as Junie, except it's chrome instead. So, of course, they made the mistake of thinking that, you know, he's the guy. Yeah, he upgraded it to Tier 3. He's also, like, 8 feet tall for no reason, even though in real life, Elijah would probably be the same height as those kids. He's the same height as Frodo in real life. Yeah. (laughs) He's, like, 3 feet tall. Yeah, uh, so he gives them a pep talk. mm -hmm. He gives, like, a military speech, and then he, uh, he hadoukens the door away. And he says, cake. Then gets zapped and loses a hundred lives <laughs> at once, and it's great. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, what's first the off, fucking did, point of that? How did he lose did, 99 lives? Why did he have 99 lives? Because he's the guy, dude. Well, that doesn't bother what? me as much as how he fucking lost him. But is he... Well, I have a question. Is he an NPC, or is he an actual player? I think he's an NPC. Because he's like He's the, the title character. Yeah, he's the, t- he is the title character. He's a guy game over, I guess. <laughs> He's the when are we guy. Gonna, when, are, when are we going to get the guy in Smash? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, if they're making a fighter pass too, we have a chance. Yeah, dude, oh, fuck Banjo Kazooie. I want the guy. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start a change.com pe- uh, petition. That would be amazing. I would sign that in a millisecond. Yeah, link oh it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I was also wondering, like, yeah, he just, they, they walk into the room, and he says, cake, and then he gets zapped for no reason, and, like, nobody else gets zapped. Like, they're all standing in the same place, and only he gets zapped. Uh, all right, listen, what, why. okay, let's think about this for a second. What if he was a necessity, right? Because that must be a pretty fucking powerful lightning bolt if it's going to take away a hundred lives. Imagine if he wasn't there. What if it just, like, flashed the entire room, all the kids were dead, movie's over, but no, the guy, the guy took the entirety of all that power. He's a hero. He died a hero, my friend. He's a martyr. Yeah. <laughs> the guy. He's a rebel. He's is a, a martyr. <laughs> but, and then the second that that happens, they look at Judy and they're like, all right, you're the guy again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Which funniest like of, line in the movie. Yeah, movie. it's like one of, the, one of the moments where this movie like is totally self-aware. And, like, actually, it's pretty funny. Yeah, then we had to get fresh off of, like, Oscar-winning Lord of the Rings, Elijah Wood. And we're like, can yeah. you be in this? Can you be on set for, like, an hour, please? I always for- I always forget that Elijah Wood is only in this movie for, like, literally, like, two minutes. Like, for some reason, my brain always puts him coming in, like, uh, during the race, like, way earlier. But, no, he's, like, literally in this movie for, like, three minutes. It's probably because their armor is exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> they just painted it. <laughs> yeah, I remember being hype as fuck in the movie theater when I was like, "Yo, is that Frodo?" <laughs> 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 he looks like a Backstreet Boy. 
Oh yeah. And then they run into um Demetra, the the pre goth girl. And then Carmen's like, Who's the fuck is this bitch? <laughs> oh yeah, and Junie's like, She's my girl, she's my friend. And then she says, I'm his girlfriend. And I'm just as surprised as Carmen is, because, like, when the fuck was that established? Like, I mean, he was, yeah, like, he was simping pretty hard, Judy, but when was it as, like, he, he says when she, when she allegedly uh, gets a game over and dies, he says, I, but I never got her email address. Like, <laughs> that was on-screen magic. I never even got her Netscape.net address. <laughs> We were go- <laughs> we were gonna chat on AIM. I had to boot up my Earthlink dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just yeah. bought a magic jack too. <laughs> we get, we've got these like giant gorilla robots. Why? That are the size of buildings, and somehow even though that she's oh, it's revealed that Demetra. Yeah. Is the uh, the deceiver? The deceiver. NPC well, she, she is does, the entire how she time. Them, though she got them to the end. She, she toyed with his herself. heart. Oh yeah. She what? What did you say? What? She toyed with his heart. She emotionally <laughs> abused Junie. <laughs> she was she was playing games with him. Yeah. <laughs> she Amber heard him. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry, Junie. My real name is Phil, and I'm fifty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that so that actually brings up something I wanted to know. Like, so she's the deceiver, right? Like, she's an NPC. It's, it's revealed that, like, she's part of the game. Mm-hmm. She's not a real person playing the game. Not his girlfriend. And I'm like... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the biggest takeaway. But, like, I'm wondering, like, okay, so does that mean, like... If if Junie wasn't like a ten year old himself, like it, say like it was it was like a thirty year old guy instead, would 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 the love interest deceiver still be like a ten year old? I really hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, That's, man. That'd be rough. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think it shapes to whatever the party is. <laughs> okay. I would hope so, and I'm sure that Robbie Rodriguez would say so, but. Our boy Robbie. So if Wes got into the game, it would just be like a lone eight string floating in midair. <laughs> it's whatever your heart desires. I would just follow it, trying to grab it, and then the toy maker would just have his way with me. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd okay. be like, well, all right. <laughs> but yeah, this girl, even though she's supposed to be the deceiver, she also martyrs herself again, I guess because she has some like computer love. Well, yeah, Junie. she says she says like it's in her programming to to deceive Junie, like, and then she, she immediately it. goes against that and sacrifices herself, like. Yeah, and so they they get out. They're oh, and Mike Judge throws that line. He's like, "Those video games are killers on the eye, huh, kid?" Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of anticlimactic end too. Like they reach level five, the guy and they dies. Leave. They yeah. pull a switch, and then there's a portal back to the real world for some reason. I guess they can't yeah. just. I get they they just can't unjack whenever they want. It's like the Matrix, <laughs> like that. And they like they say goodbye to the rest of the party. You know, they say goodbye to the tank. And oh the yeah, mage and the healer. They, they do exchange email addresses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they uh, link up with Carmen. They're like, here's our email addresses, just but then, in case. And she's like, cool, man. Cool. And then it gets the saddest that it possibly can in this movie when Grandpa's like, I, I yeah, I kind of enjoy walking. <laughs> I like mobility. I don't want to leave. And he makes him promise him that he'll still love him after they leave the game. It's like, yeah, Grandpa. Fuck. <laughs> Come God. on, Grandpa. I'm getting hungry. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow they pull... They're all back at, like, the spy lab. And they somehow were able to get the three beta tester kids into that room at once. Like, in a second. Like here, yeah, are the, here are those three dorks that you were playing with before, and they look nothing like what they're supposed to look like. And here's the thing that I didn't get, because one's supposed to be strong, one's supposed to be cool, one's supposed to be smart. I get strength, I get cool, because you can be like the Matrix and make yourself whatever you want to be. How do you become yeah. smarter? Yeah, I was wondering well, that Well, his character has more intelligence. <laughs> Just a higher intelligence stat. Sounds like that's what you need. <laughs> oh! Oh! Hey! <laughs> You just, yeah, it's just, just too smart for you. That. Yeah, this movie Well, because is... he comes in wearing a 50s greaser jacket. 
and he's also got spiked hair. Hell yeah, man! There's and, so much hair gel. And then Rez looks like one of those uh, like one office of the, depot the... workers that we saw before. Yeah, he's, yeah he yeah, definitely the, the works at a Staples. <laughs> he's got like a, sh- a button-down shirt tucked in. His pants are up to his tits, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not that cool." It's one of this movie's, uh, you know, many instances where it, it very subtly comments on on how the reality can often be such a disconnect from from the virtual reality. Oh, and it does yeah. it very well too. Yeah, yeah it's I, smart. it really convinced me. <laughs> I never once simped on e girls again. After this. I'm giving up. Yeah, I'm giving up my gamer life now. <laughs> <laughs> you better not play any more Metroid or Halo, Harlan. TM. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and so it's revealed that Grandpa released the Toy Maker because there was a switch right next to the switch that shuts down the game, which is in the game. There's a switch that basically says release the Toy Maker. And the movie pokes fun at itself because Selma Hayek's like, who's the idiot that designed that? Yeah, who put those two buttons right next to each other? <laughs> We're like, oh, okay. And they get out and he's... Uh, Oh, they get a message, like a message from the from George Clooney, the president, and he starts doing like a Sylvester Stallone impression. He's like, "I'm coming back for using me, for imprisoning me," and then it flicks over to Sly Stallone. But yeah, so by releasing him, and he comes out with his like giant ape, his mighty great ape mix, <laughs> and <laughs> so basically, Chuni's grandpa is indirectly related to hundreds of deaths across the city, if not thousands. Because they're just, like, tearing ass through buildings before they start fighting them. Well, so, like... I want to know, so, like, they, they established that, that the toy maker was imprisoned in cyberspace. And apparently, like... And then he, like, shows up, like, piloting this gorilla mech that is physically there, but also it's invisible. Yeah, they can only see uh, it with the 3D glasses. Yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> Which, um, well, this is so, just like, ridiculous at this point. <laughs> well, so he, he's physically there, like piloting the mech, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, so how? Where was his physical body imprisoned? He's jacked like, into the Matrix, dude. Where was any of them? I, how did the apes get understand. out? I could understand really them like, letting him out. He's like Hacker Man before Kung Fury. <laughs> My theory is that this is what was happening to him while he was in the Ice and Demolition Man. <laughs> when he was awake for 35 years this is what was going on <laughs> but he so oh and by the way they're green screened into the middle of Washington DC yeah and the, the OSS uh, like building that they were like originally playing the game in was like established to be on like a cliffside mm-hmm. at the sea and the, but then like they run outside the building cause they like feel like seismic activity that's off the maps and they run outside and they're like in like they're in front of like the capitol building I'm yeah like, it's supposed to be a secret spy there? agency yeah. and the building's shaped like their fucking acronym <laughs> <laughs> yeah show me an s shaped building like a vertical s shaped building movie yeah i don't know how that works <laughs> that's very structurally unsound especially during an earthquake but they uh they decide that they're going to call all of their family because they need to fight these giant mechs which these are the size of buildings and i think one of the best scenes of the movie happens with antonio banderas and he's got himself like hooked into these little brains yeah and what and, i don't know what's up with that like what's he doing who knows he's doing he's like this is the most important moment of my life yeah I'm he talks about it for like four minutes the brain and then some guy comes up and is like Hey man, your children called. Uh, they have like an emergency, and he's like, "Fuck!" and sweeps all the brains away, <laughs> yeah, and then like, flies like... off like Goku. <laughs> yeah, it's lucky that every single person that they know is just equipped with jet boots and can get there in like just a moment's notice. That's not lucky, man. That's called being prepared. Yeah, they have the, <laughs> the hover blades from Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> Are they skyjackers? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they get like the entire family which the entire family is consists of the mother and father and the two the mother from for, who is the woman from snake eyes yeah yeah um snake eyes lady oh, snake eyes did. mom 
there's another there's a great take of Antonio Banderas like when they when the family swoops in they're like you need these glasses to see him and he looks into the camera and says glasses quick <laughs> they're like how many takes did they do of that one <laughs> and, 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 and pretty sure every and, take in this movie was one <laughs> and Carmen like is just throwing glasses onto people's faces yeah from, like, somehow she away. has an armful she has like 30 glasses and every single person that arrives which is like every named character from the first two movies just flies in to help them yeah including the dinkster <laughs> Bill Paxton <laughs> flies in and he's the best thing ever yeah, he comes and says, Somebody ring the dinkster! <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you guys, I don't remember Spy Kids to it. Also, I have no idea what the fuck is up with the dinkster, but I love him. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's got fucking some, great. Like, everything in these movies is always, like, kind of weird, kind of Tim Burton-esque uncomfortable. Like, kind of <laughs> gross, kind of unsettling. And he's in there. I don't remember what his purpose is, but... It's I gather that he has an amusement park, because he mentions that. Yeah, I think he's supposed to be a dick. And at one point he brands uh, one of the monkey the robots because his little yeah. kid throws this brand up. He's like, brand him, daddy! Oh, yeah, that is like, like a sick 3D dink. shot because he puts the brand <laughs> dink right in the camera. And then the, the monkey mech feels pain, so it screams. Sure. Yeah, like, why? After having his ass pain? branded. <laughs> uh, it's kind of dark. Yeah. We've got branding in a PG movie. <laughs> yeah. The 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 grandpa just talks to Sylvester Stallone, and I guess just everything's cool after that. Yeah, he jets from his like rocket wheelchair into the ear of this thing. Oh, because there's a giant like separate mech that Sylvester Stallone is in that's like shaped like him. Yeah, there's a Sylvester mech and two monkey mechs. Yeah. And. Yeah, so he, like, flies into, I guess, the, the ear hole of the mech, which was big enough for him to fly into, which that seems like a really terrible design flaw. But anyway, yeah, he, he starts talking to the toy maker. Justin, what does he say? <laughs> I mean... Can you it, recite it from memory? Yeah, I remember on, this awesome monologue. I remember the gist. Oh, he basically says, like, you know, you ruined my life. Your mistake, which is unexplained, cost me my legs. And he starts listing off all the shit that he couldn't do because he doesn't have, he is in a wheelchair. He's like, I can't walk on the beach with my wife, and I miss my daughter's birth and wedding. It's like, why? Yeah, like, how did that prevent you from being there? The only thing you couldn't have done is walk on the beach. You could have totally went to your daughter's wedding. What if she just yeah. married an asshole? You walk on the boardwalk, <laughs> man. You roll down it. Like, what the f- It's not like people I mean, in <laughs> wheelchairs are just, like, forbidden from living. I, I, I think I think the only choice that, that we have is to assume that his daughter chose to have a wedding at the top of a staircase. <laughs> <laughs> She was like, I do not well, want my dad there. Plus, he can just jetpack everywhere. Yeah, he fucking flies in his wheelchair. Like, I don't know why you're so upset about losing your legs when you can fucking fly. Yeah, you're, like, you have the access to the most advanced technology in the world. You can do whatever. He probably could have made his own mecha legs. <laughs> yeah, like, losing your legs sucks, I'm sure. That still sucks. But you can fly. Like, it's not all that, dude. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. But then they have a big, like, dopey speech at the end, like, again, everybody's yeah, like, your family, and good, they could do together, and they all do, like, a, like a huddle and break. And the well, no, no, so, so, I mean, something that bugs me is he says, you know, when he's wrapping up his, his speech with the toy maker, is that, like, he the whole time that he was trying to free him, he was trying to, to meet up with the toy maker so that he could tell him that he forgives him for making him lose his legs. And I'm like, why didn't you... Text message, man. I'm like, why didn't... <laughs> well, he never like, got his email. Why didn't you fucking tell anyone? Because, like, the whole movie, people are like, no, Grandpa, you cannot get revenge on the toy maker. It's gonna be bad. Don't do that. Don't free the toy maker so you can have your revenge. But apparently he was never gonna do that. And I'm like, why didn't you tell anyone? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, instead he was off on the moon chasing fucking butterflies. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck's going on with him. Like having the time sentinels. of his life. It, the butterfly's like one of the webcams that, uh... That oh, yeah, and he's, like, saying ominous on. shit. He's saying ominous shit to, to his, you know, butterfly cameras. And it's like, yeah, you were totally gonna forgive him. 
But but yeah, I, everyone yeah, so. forgave him because they're like, yeah, we know your plan was for global domination and to literally enslave every child on Earth. But it's, <laughs> it's cool. Grandpa forgives you. So we do too, I guess. Yeah, no yeah. harm, no foul. It doesn't matter. I think you. I think he was a war criminal, but it's good. He said sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then that's I think it. that's it, right? That's the whole movie. That is it. Credits roll, and we get the awesome Game Over song. Which I guess is scored by Robert Rodriguez. Because he has one of the most... The things I noticed immediately is, like, he has the most bizarre credit at the end ever. You hardly ever see edited and directed by. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Directed by, he composed the music, which was sang by Alexa Vega, by the way. Yeah, it said that, then it showed a few other people. Then it was, like, screenplay and score done by Robert Rodriguez. I guess he just made this whole fucking movie. He John carpenter yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Only I think he, he didn't made write, it in like, my movie. He's he not as good write, like, as Carpenter. Corn. <laughs> he didn't no write matter. corn songs over it. <laughs> as much as he wants to be John Carpenter, I'm sorry, he's better. <laughs> so but, yeah, uh, that's that's Spy Kids three. Now here's the the age old question: Where would you put the f bomb? Oh, I I knew that. Oh, immediately, there's a lot of friends. good spots in this movie. Um, when they first reveal, like when he's in the game, and then Sylvester comes in. Welcome to the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm going to skip back to one little bit. Bill Paxton drops the Aliens Game Over line. Yeah. <laughs> it's Real like, game over, run. man, game over. Is that also oh, your yeah, F-bomb? Could it have been a fucking game over? Game fucking over, man. <laughs> Somebody ring the fucking dinkster. <laughs> yeah, that there was you mine. Go. That was mine. <laughs> I got both of y'all's revolving around the dink. Because <laughs> he's the Dude, best the character. Dinks, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm he's the best character. So Sylvester's, him, him collectively with his three programs are the best characters. <laughs> gotta, gotta, I gotta give it to him. I got one more. It's, I'm the fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right, that's, all right. I guess oh, that's yeah, it. you know what? Mine, mine would be uh, Elijah Wood saying, Fucking cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets a hundred lives taken away. Yeah. Or you know, at the at the end, whenever when he gets zapped and he's sitting on the ground like seizing while he's losing all of his lives, when it goes down to point five, right before it flicks to zero, he says, "Oops." It would be better if he was just like, "Fuck," and then dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. Uh, <sighs> Do you guys want to hear some trivia about this movie? I am. Do you have some for trivia, trivia for us? No, of course I do. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, first one listed on IMDb. Uh, George Clooney's scenes were shot in one afternoon in his own living ro- living room in a suit jacket, shirt, tie, and pajama pants. <laughs> they just shot him like a webcam. <laughs> the man couldn't even be bothered to put on actual pants he for this. He couldn't be bothered to leave his house. Uh, I mean, was anybody? I mean, he got paid. Because, so. like, out of the 20 actors in the last shots of the movie, none of them were in the same room together. <laughs> They're just, like, composited over each other. Yeah. Oh, totally. And, yeah, uh, similarly, uh, due to filming schedules, uh, many of the actors playing characters in the final scene were never on set at the same time and were put together digitally. That's not a surprise. You can very much tell. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can definitely I tell. I just said that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I don't listen well, to you. Whoa. Whoa. This one's this one's uh this one's interesting. Uh, Steve Buscemi only agreed to make a cameo in the film if Robert Rodriguez personally assured him that he would be able to keep Sporky the Flying Pig after production was complete. My man, <laughs> hell yeah, got that drip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, said in an, in an interview that he asked his kids about the previous Spy Kids movies and if he should accept the role in the third. <laughs> he he ran it by his kids first. Well, you know, more Gotta power keep the to reputation him. intact. Um, I do have a question, though. Yeah. So, what is the game? It's life. What do you mean? They just kind of go through places, and there's various creatures, but there's no goal. There's yeah, nothing is tying anything it's very together. All over the place. It's just kind of like a. I guess you could say it's a. Well, it's supposed to be, like, the first virtual reality game, right? So they're going to, like, try to pack as much shit in there as they can. Because if it was like, hey, this is, like, 20 Trash Bandicoot levels and the little ADD kids are going to get bored. 
All right, all right. I guess that's fair. So we got to uh, make the Speed Racer. We got to make it Mech Warrior. We got to make it <laughs> Banjo Kazooie. I do like how it has visual novel aspects and like a nice romantic storyline. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's art. <laughs> that's what I would call it. Uh, what was our scores again? I oh, uh, also, I I found this other last interesting piece of trivia. Uh, apparently, um, Elijah Woods, uh, the guy suit is the same suit that Junie wears. Like, physically the same suit. Not like it's it's a copy of it. It's the same suit. They just, like, spray-painted it chrome? Yes. Wow. Yes, yes right. they spray-painted it They spray painted it chrome and uh, and taped it to him because it barely fit. That's amazing. <laughs> well, Apparently. with that... That's, that's actually really interesting. That just sums the whole thing up. Well, you're asking our scores. I give this an eight. I love this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say like a seven point five. I'll this, go, is a, this is a really enjoyable movie. It was enjoyable. I'll give her a fuck. I'll give her a six. I gotta be fair. I, I wish it were a bit. I wish the writing were a bit more clever. You know, because it has a few moments where like it it acknowledges like how stupid it is or something that you're thinking. And I wish there were more moments like that, but. Oh, definitely enjoyable. It's the most enjoyable film we've watched so far. Somehow. Yeah, for sure. Low bar. By, yeah. uh, by a while. Well, speaking of which, Harlan, what is our next movie for next week? Uh, let's spin the wheel, man. Here we go. Mm. Drum roll. We are watching Wish Upon. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> I've what are you What are you talking that. about? W- Wish Upon is a is like a shitty horror movie about a girl who finds a box that grants wishes, but with you know like a bad side effect. A teenage uh, girl discovers a box that carries magic powers and a deadly price for using them. Yeah, that sounds basically. amazing already. I love it. It's and uh, we're uh, we're all gonna <laughs> we're all gonna enjoy this together because I've never even heard of this. Yep from cool. uh, from twenty seventeen. All right, guys, this has been B-Roll, boys. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. You're trash, bro. It is that good, okay? Why can't anybody give me a goddamn second? Hold on. You dig on multiverses? some kind of B-roll boys.